Ajax are a juggernaut of both Dutch and European football and one of the most successful clubs of all time. But a shocking start to the Eredivisie season has them in an intense relegation battle. This ain't normal. So today, I'm taking control in Amsterdam and making Ajax the juggernaut they once were during the Johan Cruyff era. So here is the default starting 11 we do have with Ajax here. And yeah, this squad is a little bit of a mess. It is clear to see they are missing the likes of Mohamed Kudus, Edson Alvarez, Jurgen Timber, Calvin Basie. They are missing these star players desperately. Let's go put in some work. The first thing I want to do, though, is bring Francisco Coensal back to the club. I've definitely butchered his name, but I want to give him a shot to be our starting right midfielder. We do not have the budget, though, to go out and rebuild this squad into a Champions League winner from the jump. We're going to have to put the long plan into effect here. We're signing a Serbian defender here as our first signing, Strahinja Pavlovic, joining us from RB Salzburg. There was only one player from our initial starting 11 that I wanted to sell on a permanent transfer, and that is this man here the Dutchman Branko van den Boomen, who we're sending to sell to Vigo. But there's definitely a million players I'm trying to send out on loan. And the barrage of players leaving on loan begins. Gaston Avia is heading to Galatasaray. Anas Salah Adini is off to Sassuolo. The goalkeeper Jay Gord is heading to Monaco. The Georgian, Georges Mikatal, I don't even know how to pronounce his last name. He's headed to Leverkusen. And the Dutch winger Van Axel Dongen is heading to Southampton. But don't worry, there's more. We've got Kaplan, the Turkish defender, heading to Bruges. Yorol Haito is heading to Sassuolo. If you watched our Luton Town career mode, you'd be very familiar with this dude. And the Belgian wonder kid Mika Gotts is off to Stuttgart. Enough loans. It is time for a signing. Christian Medina is going to join us here from Boca Juniors. The Argentine center midfielder signing on for 14 and a half million pounds. I am keeping our transfer business extremely stripped back and basic for this opening window. We've built out the foundations of the squad, but we've also kept a lot of money in our back pocket to adjust and adapt given where we find ourselves in January. We are in an extremely tough Europa League group though. I'm hoping we can go on a run in the Europa League this season. It's a great opportunity. Let's see what we're made of. But most importantly, I want top of the table in the Dutch League. All right, we are in the title hunt, but we have got some work to do here third in the Dutch league with Ajax. And the big problem we're having is through our simulation, Tuba Akpom has been the preferred striker and he is absolutely crushing it here. Now, Brian Broby is the man I want long-term, but the stats don't lie. 17 goals at the halfway point of the season is cool. Broby has submitted a transfer request, but I want to send him out on loan. So that's what we're going to try doing here in January along with some other transfers. But we have lost our former third string goalkeeper, Remgo Pazvia, the 40-year-old goalkeeper, heading to Union St. Galois on a free. Oh yeah, we also came second in our Europa League group. So we're into the preliminary round and we're firsting Manchester United, the Ten Hag Derby. Gonna have a pretty big play departure here though. This is really focusing on the future of the squad, but our attacking midfielder, Steven Berkowitz, is headed to Liverpool for 17 and a half million pounds. And we're going to invest a huge amount of our transfer budget into a new attacking midfielder. Thiago Almada finally gets his big European move that I feel like he's been linked with for half a decade now. But the Argentinian wonder kid joins us at Ajax from Atlanta United. We've only received transfer offers for Broby. I couldn't get a single loan offer in here for him though. So I'm going to have to manage this situation between him and Chuba Akpom really delicately. We might have a big question ahead of us in season two. AZ Alkmaar beat us by one point to win the Eredivisie title. Got to convert those draws into wins, man. We are in a great spot though. Much better than Ajax's real life blight. I mean, the teams in the relegation zone here are well below us. But I believe that means we are in the Champions League again in Season 2. Feyenoord did win Orange Becker. Bayern Munich take down Napoli to win the Champions League. Liverpool end up winning an all-English Europa League final. How did we go? We beat Manchester United in the preliminary rounds. We won in the round of 16, but we lost to Liverpool in the quarterfinals. I'm hoping Berkowitz 
didn't have an impact. But in the Conference League, it again, it's an all English Conference League final between Villa and Brighton. That is an unbelievable season from Tuba Akpom. Oh my God, Almada in half a season managed to get 21 goal contributions, but that is unreal from Tuba Akpom. I'm hoping that boosts his value up for season two and we can turn a nice little profit on him. Out of our lone players, did anybody go up crazily? I mean, Avia went up plus three. Yorel Haito went up plus three. Okay, Van Axel got, they went up plus four. So there's some good growth among the lads. And we can have Georges as our starting striker as well. We have got options. Season two is gonna be a fun one, lads. Let's crack on. Priority number one for me in this second season is investing in a goalkeeper who can be a pillar for us at the back for the foreseeable future. We do have Geronimo Rulli, but he's not getting any younger. We're going to sign the Italian keeper, Marco Carnaseschi here from Atalanta. Little loan move here though. Benjamin Tahirovic is off to Brentford for two years. And with the signing of Carnaseschi, we are going to say goodbye to Geronimo Rulli, the Argentine goalkeeper heading to Sevilla. Kaplan, another year, another loan move for this dude. Gabriel Masui, we're going to part ways with the youngster on a permanent. And we're going to cash in on Tuba Akpom's golden boot winning season as we sell him to AS Roma and get 14 and a half mil. It's Brian Brody season, baby. Selling Borna Sosa was not on my agenda at the start of the season, but we got 26 million pounds for him, which was also not on my agenda. That was not what I was expecting. When I replied that to Unai Emery, my jaw almost hit the floor when he accepted it, but we've got 26 million pounds now. Going to hold off on signing anybody with that money right now, though. Got more low Loan moves to make. Loan moves are what get me up in the morning. Yes, another loan move, lads. Let's go. Jay Gord is off on loan again. Gaston Avia is heading to Benfica. The English goalkeeper, Charlie Setford, is heading to the MLS. And the big one, Georges is now off to Milan for the season. It is interesting that Milan want him at striker. I'll be interested to see if he starts. We're also sending Van Exel Dongan on loan to Bilbao. But here is our starting 11 for season number two, the floor is set for Broby. I'm giving him the first half of the season. If he's still not playing, if he still wants out of the club, we might have to reconsider. But just about everybody is in notice in this squad because we have got an absolute war chest ready to unleash if we need to. We are in the Champions League though here in season number two and our group is absolutely cooked. Couldn't have asked for a much harder group. Dinamo Kiev, Borussia Dortmund, and Manchester City. I love how my controller accidentally hit the right trigger and go to the Europa League because that's probably where we're going to end up again. If we get out of this group, my confidence and my whole approach to this season will change drastically. Wow, we're not even, we're not even in the Europa League. We came bottom in our group. Man, I thought we were going to at least finish above Dinamo Kiev, but we have finished rock bottom in our Champions League group, and there is no European football for the second half of this season. And we're quickly losing touch with the Dutch title race, with the Eredivisie title race. We need to convert those draws into wins, man. 36 points. We need to get our act together here in the second half of the season. Yeah, Brian Broby, I'm giving him his chance, but he is not getting it done. He still wants out of the club, and he's only got four goals this season. I think it might be time to unleash the war chest. I negotiated this deal, and one day later, Brian Broby is out of the club. This dude wanted to leave. We've sold him to Nottingham Forest. It is time for a new chapter up top. We need to sign a killer. We are going to go absolutely feral here. Gonzalo Ramos, the Portuguese striker, getting his big money move from Benfica. 45 million pounds here. A five-year deal. 84 rated. Let's hope this guy can bang the goals in for us. And get us an Eredivisie title. We don't want to be sitting third. We want to be the best. And in true Ajax fashion, we've picked up a quality one-day kid here. Bilal El Canous, the Moroccan attacking midfielder, is going to join us from Genk. Just trying to continue the investments here, lads. Trying to keep us sorted for every possible situation with Ajax. Nilsson Viper, he's joined and he's already unhappy. Get your shit sorted, buddy. Regardless, he doesn't seem too happy about it, but I'm happy with the signing. Even our efforts in the January window 
they were not enough, lads. My god. We finished third in Eredivisie. PSV and Feyenoord bridging the gap and showing us that it is not a one-horse league anymore. We don't even get close in the Orange Becker either. This season has been a massive failure. PSG win the Champions League. The Europa League goes to Villarreal. And the Conference League is for, okay, the Polish club, Rakal. Thiago Almada, one of the only bright spots of the season. I mean, I'm not too happy with Gonzalo Ramos. He only gets five goals. Granted, he only got half a season, so we're going to have to hopefully have improved numbers in his second season. But man, we need to sort our shit out. Coming out of the gates, swinging here at the start of season three. Perseus used to play for Ajax. He left for Torino recently in real life. We're going to bring him back to Amsterdam. The Dutch defender joining us here from Everton for 36 million pounds. Wouldn't be this rebuild without some loan moves. Had though is off on a loan move to Monaco. And we're really gonna shake this squad up. Our left back, Owen Wyndell, who's someone I've signed in rebuilds in the past as an end game left back. But in this circumstance, I want better. I want higher. We're selling him to Leipzig. We're sending Forbes on a loan move to Lenz. Nelson Viper on a loan move to Celta Vigo. And Pavlovich is leaving on a permanent deal. I told you lads, I'm not stuffing around anymore this year. We're cashing checks and breaking necks. We're also saying goodbye to Olivier Artisan for the season. Same deal with Christian Rasmussen, the Danish striker. Get in there, fellas. We get ourselves an upgraded left back. It is my Mark Kukurea, the Spanish left back, joins us from Chelsea for 32.4 million pounds. This team needs to be in the hunt for the Dutch league title. We have no excuses now. We've got no Champions League to contend with this year. We need first place and we need to assert our dominance. But lads, if you are enjoying this rebuild and you aren't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you score me and keep that subscribe button down below. We are on the cusp of half a million subscribers. So help us get there. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That is a great start. Nine points clear at the top of the table and undefeated in the league. If we could go undefeated and have an invincible season here with Ajax, then we would truly be back. Imagine, imagine the scenes if we went undefeated in every single tournament. That would be ridiculous. I'm sticking to my word though, lads. If I don't think a player is cut out for this team, I'm happy to cut them. We're doing that right here with Francisco Concisal. I thought he was going to be so much better than he was, but we have ended up selling him here to Fiorentina. Still a decent prospect, but we need better right now. I was actually planning on going out and signing a new right winger, but Carlos Forbes is living up to his potential. He's going up plus six and a half a season. That is a no-brainer. Let's bring the Portuguese winger back and give him that starting spot and see what he can do here in this second half of the season. My God, six overall is ridiculous. But there is absolutely no way that I am not using that transfer budget. I'm not letting that money just sit there. We're going to go ahead and sign Ryan Gravenberch. We're getting the band back together. The former Ajax player returns for 74 million pounds. I've used every penny to get this guy back to the club. We don't go invincible. We don't get the undefeated season we wanted, but we have won Eredivisie and I am over the moon about that. Back in the Champions League in season four, we finished four points ahead of PSV Eindhoven. We have not made the Orange Becker final once though. Why are we doing so bad in this tournament every year? Super curious to see how we fare in the Champions League next year. Barcelona win it this year. Real Madrid end up winning the Champions League. How did we go? We got a eliminated in the quarterfinals to Real Madrid. I mean, we only lost by one goal to the eventual champions. That gives me a little bit more confidence. And for your wow, of course, of course, our winger that we sell goes and wins a conference league. Of course. Gonzalo Ramos. Come on, mate. You love to see it. He disappointed in his first year at the club, but here in season three, his second season at the club, he gets 30 goals and six assists. He's 86 overall. He is a stud. And honestly, Birdvine, I'm stoked with this guy. I thought I might have had to relegate him to the bench, but he is beasting. Bring on season four. Let's throw everything we've got at a Champions League run. We're back in the Champions League and actually trying to get out of our group this time. Season starts with a departure. Yakov Medic off to Mallorca. Really trying to clean out a lot of the unnecessary players in this squad. Mansberg falls into that category. And honestly, so does Anna Salah Edi. 
15. Another player that I really wanted to work out for us leaving the club, and that is the Turkish winger Nasi Unova off to Watford. This is huge. We are signing someone that has a lot of experience playing in the Eredivisie. He's a former PSV, or no, sorry, Feyenoord player, but is Lucharel Giertruda. He's signed from Valencia. He's back in the league and he's ready to help us get towards Champions League glory. It might be controversial, but I do not care because we're benefiting from it. This team is looking good though, lads. This team is coming along brilliantly. We have laid the foundations. The big question mark though is around Forbes. He's got good potential to begin with. Can he live up to it? Can we get Champions League football? And can we go deep in it this year? We just can't catch a break though. I mean, it is the Champions League. You'd expect to have hard teams. But again, we have got another difficult group. Frankfurt, Real Madrid, Royal Antwerp. Let's not finish bottom. Let's, let's, let's try that. Let's try not finishing bottom of the group, eh? No, what the fuck is this group? What is this group? Frankfurt go undefeated. We come in second, which is honestly where I expected us to come. Real Madrid didn't get a win. Real Madrid have been straight up grouped. They're not even in the Europa League or the Conference League. What am I witnessing? That aside, that craziness aside, we are playing Borussia Dortmund in the round of 16. Let's see how we go in this Champions League season. Real Madrid got no, what is, what? But we are not doing well domestically. We are on an absolute roller coaster in the Eredivisie. We're coming third right now with Ajax. We're on 36 points. PSV breathing down our necks. We've got, we're more likely to fall out of any European football and finish sixth than we are to come second. All right, we're about to go crazy here in the transfer window. I'm gonna sell a lot of players to raise as much money as possible. Ramaj is off to FC Twente on a permanent contract. This is gonna be the smallest one. Trust me, I have transfer listed some players. I didn't expect a transfer list. All right, so this is either about to be a master stroke or the biggest regret we're gonna have this season. First man out is gonna be the backup defensive midfielder, Benjamin Tahirovic, who's off to Valencia. But the big one is the departure of Kenneth Taylor. I'm still not certain about whether I should have sold this guy, but the Dutch midfielder is heading to Napoli and we get 50 million pounds in our back pocket. Georges is off to Atletico Madrid for 26 million pounds. And Carlos Forbes has officially been sold. I'm going all in on trying to sign a world-class right winger and get us as deep in the Champions League as possible this year. And there we go. We have got ourselves a world-class winger. He's an attacking midfielder right now. He's a Dutchman. It is Xavi Simmons coming to Ajax. Was he formerly at Ajax? I feel like he might have been. But we have signed him from our Champions League round of 16 opponent, Borussia Dortmund. And yeah, we're going all in on a Champions League title this year. I want to go balls to the wall. Chavi Simmons, welcome to Ajax. All right, here we go, lads. This is going to be a real test, a real barometer of where we're at. We've successfully converted Simmons into a right winger. We're stepping up against his former club, Borussia Dortmund, in Amsterdam. The scoreline is a one-all draw. Chavi Simmons scores four minutes into the game, but we're heading back to the Signal Aduna Park all tied up. All right, rainy night in Dortmund, all tied up. First leg. Ended as a draw. Second leg. Are we headed to the quarterfinals? We are. Oh my God. Our decision to sign Chavi pays off brilliantly. We come from behind and we are headed to the Champions League quarterfinals with Ajax. Come on, lads. Very interesting. Okay. AS Monaco have loaned a few players out to them in this rebuild. We're facing them in the Champions League quarterfinals. And all things considered, given the other teams available, I would say I'm not trying to discount Monaco, but this is definitely the best draw. The big problem with our round of 16 game was our performance in the home leg. We got a comfortable win away. We need to be stepping up at home here. The first leg against Monaco. Come on, lads. Lay the foundations. Lay the foundations for the away leg. That is not laying the foundations, my god. We're probably going to win the second leg 4-0 because apparently we've adopted the mantra of being an away team. It's the moment of truth. Six days later, we travel to France, travel to Monaco, and our season's on the line here, man. 
Our season is on the line. Please, I'm hoping we can live up to our expectations of being a second leg team and away leg team. We, oh my, oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, EAFC gods. We are through in a penalty shootout. My God. Bird finally captain misses the pen, but then we step up and we are through to the Champions League semi-finals. I'm not feeling confident though. I am not confident. And for whoever we end up facing, we're gonna have to do the first leg without Thiago Almada, whose yellow card in extra time sees him suspended for the semi-final. And for the semi-final, there is a Milan derby between Inter Milan and AC Milan. And there's another derby, a massive derby, the Eric Ten Hag derby. We're facing Manchester United in the semis. This is massive though, lads. Of course, Ajax made it to the semi-finals only a few years ago in real life where they lost to Tottenham. We're here again against English opposition. We are without Almada, which is the huge risk we took when we sold so many players in January. We are short on backups and it might bite us in the ass here. We're at home, first leg, and we come away with the win. Gonzalo Ramos. We've got an advantage headed to Old Trafford. That is a massive performance. Come on, Ajax. One foot in the final. We put all of our eggs into one basket to try winning a Champions League this season. We hold the advantage with one game to play. Can we get ourselves into a Champions League final? Come on, Ajax. Come on, Ajax. We do it, lads. It is Gonzalo Ramos getting a brace. That is too many yellow cards though. If Xavi is suspended for the final, I am going to lose my head. All right, I don't think as yet yeah, nobody's suspended. Thank the Lord for that. Thank the Lord for that. So after four years at Ajax, we find ourselves in a Champions League final. AC Milan are our opponent in the final. This is gonna be massive. Two of the most successful clubs in European history facing off once again. Taking a look around the grounds. Villarreal defeat. Oh, that is not a good omen. A Dutch side losing in a European final. That is not a good omen. I'm glad to see Atalanta losing there and it's not like an FC 20 or something or a Feyenoord, but Leon win the Conference League. But we have pulled off a miraculous second half of the season. We put all of our chips forward. We went all in on this season and it pays off. We win our second Eredivisie title, but we are still without an orange backer. AZ Alkmaar winning that. We were unfortunately eliminated in the semis. Ryan Gravenberch though, what a season. We bring him back to Ajax to the Johan Cruyff Arena and he steps up 40 goal contributions for the Dutchman. I cannot wait to use him in the Champions League final and I cannot wait to use this team. Let's see if we can round out an incredible season with a Champions League title. And our job just became 10 times harder because this Champions League final is being played at the San Siro. Everything in Milan's favor. Let's prove him wrong, lads. Let's get it done with Ajax. Oh, they've come out of the gates firing. Don't let Liao get a shot off. Good block, Sitalo. Oh, the overlapping ball there. They've got the shot. It's straight at Kaneshi. Don't let him get the follow up. That is some heroic keeping. Get it away. Come on, Kukureya. Get it away. They've hit the crossbar. Oh my God. We almost just scored the weird, world's weirdest own goal. Neil, AC Milan are on us like a bad rash right now, man. We're going to play the advantage. Simmons in there. Get your header on it. Birdvine. It's the post. No. Deflection. I'm proud smash and beat. No. Beat it through. I wanted to go to Ramos, but I'm cool with Simmons. Xavi Simmons gives us the lead. Come on, lads. We got dominated in the opening 35 minutes, but all the traffic has been one way since then. And our January signing, Xavi Simmons gives us the lead in the Champions League final. AC Milan, they know they need to do something here. They nope. go for a long shot. Karneshi gets thrown off from the power of it, but luckily it means nothing. Milan playing a press here. They're all over the shop though. We've got the pace there of Gertruda. Put it back post, back post. The shot, no, we should have got a tap in there from Ramos. But it doesn't matter, lads. We hold on. Oh, that was such a roller coaster of a Champions League final. And it was a roller coaster of a rebuild, but we have restored faith in the Ajax name. We have won a European championship with the great club from Amsterdam for the first time in decades. And it is going to be the man that has been wearing the captain's armband since day one, Steven Bergwijn, to lift the Champions League trophy and crown 
Ajax Amsterdam, champions of Europe once again. Lads, if you enjoyed today's rebuild, make sure you click here to subscribe and click here to watch another video.